Plaster is heavy, which is fine in sculpture, but I like to keep my sculpture as light as possible, especially with big stuff. Earlier I was talking about massing newspaper and tape around an armature in order to create the general shape on which plaster would be applied. And it's also a way of, of handling the plaster so that the plaster becomes a modeling material or a, a surfacing material rather than a massing material. This stuff is household foam board insulation. It cuts very easily. I use a very rough tooth saw so it just tears the material quickly. You can also break it, especially when it's small like this, over your knee. And what I do is when I'm creating a piece of sculpture, I'm composing it as I'm going. I generally don't make a model and then scale up from there. I'm trying to figure out what this thing is going to look like as I go. And that's where this stuff comes in handy. So what I've been using is these little skewers from any grocery store. These are shish kebab skewers or knitting needles. Knitting needles are really inexpensive and they last whereas these things tend to break and fall apart so I don't have any knitting needles handy. I'm using these. These work fine. And what, I, what they allow me to do is take a piece of foam that I think is roughly the right shape and size for cut it, bust it, shape it up roughly, very roughly, and just skewer it and then hold it in place with these skewers. Step back, look at it if I think I'm on the right path, then I keep going with this and modeling and modeling by just sticking these things together with sticks. And then at the end of that period when I've got enough board pinned together, I'll take a can of the, um, it's called Great Stuff, it's the spray foam insulation, and then squirt it onto the surface or into whatever cracks have formed between this piece and the next piece. And I'd like to use up one whole can of the spray at once, come back the next day, and now I've got a lot of material on the model, and I can look at it, decide what I want. If you don't like it, you know, we take it off, knock it off, saw it off. You just you add and subtract and add and subtract and add and subtract. If you don't like an arm or a leg, cut it off. Let's say, for instance, I wanted this leg bigger. Now I don't, but that's okay. I pin this here. Doesn't look very good. I take my spray insulation, pop this off, spray the insulation there, put it back on, pin it in place because the insulation expands and you don't want it to just lift your piece of insulation board right up. You want to hold this in place. You know you're going to come back with a saw or some other device and shape it and cut it. And you may cut and you may end up cutting most of this off. And and I've done that. Add an entire piece of plastic and then the next day come and shave it and cut it and shave it and cut it down until I realize I didn't need it in the first place. But that's okay because that's an awful lot like what you do with clay add and subtract and add and subtract until you find that line. If I'm shaping this piece of plastic, I'm doing so keeping in mind that there's going to be a coating of, in this case, plaster on top of it. Now, I could be using other materials like various kinds of plastic, although you don't want a plastic that's going to attack this stuff. Fiberglass resin will attack this stuff and melt it. Obviously, you can't apply fiberglass resin directly to this. You'd have to put a barrier coat in there. Um, and you can do that. There's problems with that. The barrier coat I have used in the past has been Bondo. Bondo is there's a lot of mixing with Bondo. There is a lot of sanding afterward. It's not a good modeling compound, but it will act as a nice solid intermediate surfacing material. And then you can put on a thin coat of fiberglass and you've got a nice strong structure. Obviously, the thicker your exterior coat is, the stronger it's, the whole thing is going to be. I try not to fall in love with the shape that the massing materials, the plastic or newspaper, create. Because that tends to be visually and psychologically your final surface. So you tend to build towards that as though 
you're making something out of plastic, and you're not. You're making something out of plaster. This is just this is what goes underneath. So you always have to visualize that your final work is going to be bigger and thicker than what you've got. Um, what I've done with the head. This is a tremendous. This would be really heavy if this were plaster. But as you can see, I think it's pretty obvious I built this headdress out of found uh, foam plastic packing shapes, packing materials for computers and TVs and things. The world is full of this stuff. I like all the shapes, the, the, the geometric shapes. I also like to take those and bust them up so you get combinations of raw edges and um, polished, machined edges. And then I go over the whole thing with a layer of um, plaster bandages. I was having trouble seeing the whole head and headdress as it was evolving. And that's something that you may be noticing here. You've got lots of different shapes and forms and colors and it, it's hard to read. Once this thing is all one color, you can it'll it'll bond together visually. And it's not a bad strategy when you're about ready to paint the whole thing just in order to be able to see it and make the changes here before I've got plaster on and and at which point changes become much more difficult, I'd probably just paint it white.